PDF files are a very common way of publishing and sharing design data for review and markup. AutoCAD can support creating PDF files as a publishing output. Instead of printing to a piece of paper, you can print to a PDF file. That makes a CAD file or a drawing very easy to share, and it also protects it so that you know that somebody can't mess with your CAD file. PDF files can also be attached to drawings, which can be used as a reference when collaborating on projects or to get additional line work in your drawings from a third party. In AutoCAD, you can also import the geometry, true type font text, and raster images from a specified page in a PDF file, or from all or part of an attached PDF underlay. And you can do this in a couple of different ways. So I have a regular CAD file here, it's open, it's blank. I'm going to import a PDF. You can get to it in one of a couple of ways. You can just use the import command. Type in import, press enter, go to the folder where you've stored the files that came with the video. Go to the chapter and find the floor plan samples model.pdf file. Select it and click open. When you're here, you have several different options. This tells you how big the PDF is set up for. This is an ANSI A size or 11 by 8.5 size in inches. It's a piece of paper. The PDF scale is 1 to 400. And then here you have all of your settings. Now you can tell it to go to 0, 0, or you can click that box to specify the insertion point on the screen. You can scale it up. This is drawn at 1 to 400 scale, so I want it to be inserted at 400 times the scale of the line work. I can rotate it. I can pick any of these that I would like or just type in a number. Now you have how the data will be presented in your file once it's inserted. Let's look at the layers first here. If the PDF has layers in it, if it was made from a CAD file, it probably does. You can use those layers. Or you can create an object layer, or you can use your current layer. In this case, I'm going to use the layers already in my file. Now here on the left side, we have the different data. Do I want to import vector geometry? Yes, that's the line work. Do I want solid fills? Well, if something is filled in, it's hatched, I can make it as a bunch of lines, or I can make it as a solid filled hatch, which is what I want to do. I also want to bring in any true type text. I don't have any raster images in here, so I'm just going to leave that open for right now. If there was an image, like a company logo, you can insert that into your drawing from the PDF. You'll click this box. And one thing you'll need to do, though, is go to this option box here on the bottom left. If you click that, it'll open up your options window for AutoCAD. Now here it will take you right to the Files tab on your Options window, and it will ask you where do you want these images to be stored. Now that's an important thing to keep in mind. When you import a PDF that has an image in it and you want that image in your CAD file, it has to save that image somewhere, and so you need to tell it where to put it. Now when you do that, you can only pick one spot. So you pick a central location where they will all go to, and then you might have to move that raster image to a project folder or something. Once you do that, you're going to have to repath that image's reference path inside your CAD file. So those are the settings for the import data. Now I have different import options here as well. You can import this whole thing as a block, which might not be a bad idea, because then you get all that geometry and you can easily recreate it by having it as a block in your file. So that's something you might want to do. Say, no, I don't want to do that, then you can uncheck it. I'm going to do that for this example. Here you can join the lines and arc segments. You can make this all line up together, these rectangles possibly, or maybe the whole border will be joined as one polyline. AutoCAD is going to interpret that on its own, so it may not interpret it the way you want to. So if that's something you don't want to happen, you might want to turn that off. In my experience with the way this works, sometimes it gets a lot of it together and it does a pretty good job, but it misses some things here and there. It just doesn't really know what needs to be joined, and you may not want anything joined, so you could do it yourself. But if you are going to join a lot of the lines into a polyline, you probably want to keep this turned on so that it will help you by already joining the majority of the lines. Here you can convert solid fills to hatches, which is a good idea. You can apply line weight properties. So if the lines are drawn thicker than other lines, AutoCAD will automatically apply that to your line work. Now another option that I usually leave checked as well is the infer line types from collinear dashes. I do this because if there is a dashed or a dotted line, I want it to be one line. I don't want it to be five or 10 or 50 different dashed lines. I usually keep those on. When I insert something, this is typically the way I keep my settings set up in the import PDF options. 
So when you're all done, you have everything set up the way you want, click the OK button. Wherever you want to put your line work, just left click on it. It'll process it and it brought in this line work. It brought it in as a block. I'm going to copy it. Now I have the line work here again. Now if I explode my information here, I type in X for the explode command, press enter, select the block, press enter again, and now you'll see these are all different individual lines. Some of these boxes are joined up real nicely because I had that join setting on. This room here is pretty good. Grabbed all of this through here. So if I wanted to hatch that wall, it really wouldn't be that big of a deal. Now it did kind of just stop here and then go around the corner. So this is probably how I might want it. And then it had nowhere else to join to here, so it stopped. Here it joined the doors together. You get the idea. Sometimes it does a pretty good job. These aren't joined at all. But this is joined. That one's not joined. These are joined. So it's not perfect. It took a lot of the work out of it for me. Now I have these joined. I can just finish the job in less time. Importing text that's not a true type font means that it won't come in as text. It'll come in as regular lines. You can see this number six is just a polyline and it has all of these vertexes. This zero looks a little on the heavy side, a little deformed. This one looks pretty good. Now, a lot of times the text is going to be just fine the way it is. In this case, I can read everything. It's going to print okay. So text is not perfect. Even though when I zoom in on it, it looks kind of wonky. But for the most part, this is it. And it put all these things on its own layers. It used the layers from the PDF. You notice here it says PDF in front of it. So you can sort your different files with PDFs. Now you may notice here some of these layers say PDF. That's how they start. In this specific CAD file, I already inserted or imported PDF line work into it. I did it as a test run. Plus I wanted to see what would happen with the layers. The first insertion I did, I called it PDF and then the layer. The second PDF I put in, it called it PDF2 and then the layer. Well, that's really nice because when I go into my PDF manager, I can sort these things by the name PDF or PDF2. I could even make a layer filter for it if I'd like to help me isolate my different objects if I have more than one imported PDF into my drawing. So that's the gist of it. That's really cool. One other thing I want to show you, though, if you XREF, I typed in XR and then enter to get to the XREF manager. If you have a PDF referenced in, it's called the PDF underlay. So in my external references manager, I'm going to attach a PDF. Browsing to the PDF, I'm going to open it. That's what I want, specify on screen. So here's the PDF that's referenced in. If you select your referenced PDF, you'll get the PDF underlay contextual ribbon. And here you can click the import as objects button. Now, if you do that, you get a couple of options in your command line. You get polygonal. This will select just a small portion of your PDF. In this case, I want to just get one of these rooms. I can select all. It will import everything, or I can select the settings options. If I do that, I get this little box here. It looks like all the settings from the big import PDF command. Sometimes you may want to turn some things off. I don't want this as a block. I just want the regular line works. I don't want it to be joined. I don't want any hatches. Line weights are fine, and for line types, yes, no raster images. I'm going to turn these options off. I'm going to click OK. Then I'm back here, and I'm going to pick this window. Now, what it's going to do is it will only import this part of the PDF. I don't want to see the rest of the line work, so I can just keep the PDF on. I can detach the PDF, or I can just unload it. I'm going to unload it for right now. Sometimes you might find that it doesn't import what's here, and it'll give you an error message, say something was too restrictive. So go back. Try it again, turn off some of the settings, and maybe it will be okay. So here I have just this room. This is all that I wanted. I got a little bit of extra, but that's okay. I can type in E on the command line, start my erase command, and get rid of what I don't want. If you have a PDF that has line work in it that you need, it's very easy to import that PDF's line work as line work inside your CAD file.